handy timer to uh, see how I'm doing on time. All right, so um, <laughs> I did my project on uh, Google Glass, specifically um, uh, investigating a potential application uh, for it in the corporate world, specifically um, giving interviews. So uh, the idea would be that the interviewer would be wearing glass and it would provide assistance to him or her while conducting the interview. Um, and so let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, first of all, um, I'm sure you, you guys have, uh, have heard all about Glass. It's been making the news, the headlines. Um, some people don't really think it's particularly good looking. It looks kind of geeky. Um, fashion statement, I should have put that in quotes. Um, it's a wearable computer. The, the device itself runs Android. Um, it was released with, uh, at the very beginning, it was running Android 4.0.3, which is uh, ice cream sandwich iteration. And it has actually recently received the software update to uh, KitKat, which is 4.4.2, the most recent version. Um, and a lot of, one of the things that Glass is good at is being a sort of personal assistant. So it is context sensitive. Um, it connects to your phone through your phone's data connection using a Bluetooth uh, interface. And it is sensitive to the context of what you're doing. So let's say you go to um, a particular location of interest, you will get a little chime, and on the Google Glass display, you will have some information about where you are. Um, also context sensitive in terms of time, so or in terms of communication. So if you get a new email message, you'll get a chime notifying you, and you can read it if you want or not. Same goes for a text message or a Google Hangouts message, and probably more apps as uh, Glass develops. And it's com controlled by um, simple gestures. There is a touch sensitive pad on the side here that uh, you can, it can recognize single taps, uh, taps with two fingers, swipes forward uh, and swipes backward, both with one and two finger fingers. And actually I think it can also recognize a three finger tap, which is kind of hard to pull off because the, the touch pad is very small. Um, as I said, it's, uh, it's, it's hands-free, so you can use it as a Bluetooth headset. Uh, it's kind of an expensive Bluetooth headset. It costs uh, $1,500 in its current iteration because it's still in beta. Um, you used to be able to do video calls, um, but unfortunately, the latest update actually removed that functionality to a significant outcry in the community. Um, and of course, the biggest uh, concern that people have about Glass is the camera, the cam slash camcorder. And a lot of people say it's a privacy nightmare. So um, rightly so, of course. People don't want to be recorded when they're out and about. Um, and you can do a lot of other things with it um, you know, through apps that are still being developed. Um, so just uh, some user interface basics. So the very first screen you see is just the clock. And it has OK Glass in quotes, which means that if you say that phrase, uh, it will then uh, provide you with a list of possible actions you can take by saying additional things. So let's, you say, OK, Glass, and then say Google, um, I don't know, the nearest Chinese restaurant or, or something like that. And it'll, it'll pull up search results. In this case, I, I kind of like the game Ingress. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's uh, kind of like geocaching plus Foursquare. But I, it has a little mini game that called the Glyph Hack. And I was doing a search for the glyphs so that you know, I could practice and get better at them. And then down at the bottom left is uh, a Google Hangouts card where I'm collaborating with my fellow players in that game, um, making strategic considerations and such. And then here is actually a very recently launched app, the, uh, the calendar, um, just Google Calendar. And that card is pinned uh, to the left of your home screen, the clock. So you can view that card whenever you want. And if I did have an event today, I should have written this event down as it's pretty important after all. Um, yeah, I, I took that screenshot yesterday because the, the calendar functionality was released like probably a week or two ago with the latest update. So it's actually, no, the calendar, they just went live a couple of days ago. So it's very new. Um, and then a little bit more user interface. We've got Gmail. Uh, apparently, somebody searched for me on academia.edu. Um, and if you tap on that, you can get um, a series of actions. It's a menu. And you see that little line there indicates that I'm in the middle of the menu. So there's a bunch of other options. Read more. Um, I don't remember what the other ones are. One of them has a link. You can go to the website. Um, and then 
I have a missed call that happens to be my mom's phone number. Um, she was, you know, trying to talk to me, and apparently I didn't answer. Um, and then here is just uh, the device information card. I included this because, as you can see, it has the latest software uh, version, uh, Explorer Edition 16.11, and that 16 was the update that released KitKat, and then there were a couple of updates after that to resolve some outstanding bugs. Uh, and you can see I have a lot of space left. The device actually has, as you'll see in the next slide, it has 16 gigs of storage, which is pretty substantial. So the hardware features that we're interested in are the, uh, it has a small bone conduction speaker so that you can hear the chimes that the device makes. Or if you're on the phone, you can, that's the speaker through which you can hear um, what people are saying. It has a microphone, um, a five megapixel camera for pictures and video. It actually has an eye movement sensor uh, on the inside of the device. And the, current, the only current functionality that takes advantage of that sensor is the, uh, the experimental wink for picture, which is enabled. But since I'm taking video, it's not uh, currently operational. But this, this probably is, ties back to the privacy nightmare that people are concerned about. You don't even have to reach for the camera button that it has up here or say, OK, Glass, take a video. You can just, or take a picture, and you can just wink. Um, it also has an accelerometer, so it can, uh, it has a, a head wake up angle, so it's generally off, uh, it's not supposed to be intrusive, but if you tilt your head up 30 degrees, it will turn on uh, the screen. And it has on head detection so that when you take the device off, it realizes that it's off, and uh, hopefully it shouldn't accidentally turn on. Uh, and then I mentioned the touchpad, the screen is actually pretty uh, small resolution, it's only 640 by 360. Um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Um, so when you're on the go, you communicate to Glass with your phone through MyGlass, which is Google's official app for it, and it provides internet connectivity. Um, and of course, it has a standard micro USB port for um, charging, and there's also actually an earbud that you can use if you don't like the bone connection speaker. Anyway, I should move on so I can focus on the important thing. So. Um, the research that I did is I interviewed a bunch of people at a medium-sized software company that actually is a government contractor. Um, the company's name is uh, ASM Research, which was recently acquired by Accenture. So now it's an Accenture Federal Services Company. And I met with people uh, ranging from actually the COO of the company and the CTO um, down to technical leads, and I also met with some HR people. And I, the first thing I did was to get user impressions on the device. So I let them play with it a little bit. I demonstrated some functionality and uh, sort of got their take on it. And the positive uh, impressions, um, as you can see, um, hands-free control has a lot of value. Um, because the glass is on your head, you don't have to look down at your phone to do certain things, so that minimizes distraction. The voice recognition is actually pretty good, um, especially even in a noisy environment. Uh, I tested it one time on a busy street, and it was pretty much flawless. Turn-by-turn um, -turn navigation is a feature of the device, so um, it uses your phone's GPS and you can get directions, say, while you're driving or biking. And it'll show up on the screen, it'll give you voice uh, instructions, like turn left here, stuff like that. And uh, people commented that that seems safer than tinkering with a phone or GPS unit while driving. Um, the user interface is, uh, is purposely very simple, um, very minimalistic, uh, black background, white Roboto text, which is the, the current Android font of choice. So it's also, it's also the font I'm using in this presentation, by the way. Um, and the ability to snap photos by blinking is pretty cool. Um, but there were also some negative uh, things about it. Uh, some people simply don't like wearing glasses. The fact that it's on your face can be kind of intrusive. Um, one person I talked to was concerned that if you wear it for um, over a long time, uh, you might your right eye might get more strained than the other because the screen is actually only over the right eye. So it projects, uh, it looks like the screen is like a little bit in front of you uh, by visual illusion. And you know, if you use it a lot, it might, uh, might not be good for your eye. Also, voice recognition is actually a little too sensitive. So if there's multiple people around and someone's talking, um, it might actually pick up what they're saying. And I was just in the room talking to the, to the person I was uh, interviewing, I, inter I talked to people one at a time, and that was actually an issue just with the two of us. Um, also, there, the user interface cannot be completely navigated through voice, 
So you still need to use a touchpad for basic navigational functionality, like swiping for forward, swiping backwards, swiping down to exit the current app you're in. Um, and the biggest concern of all is uh, battery life, which is very lacking. The battery on this device is actually quite small. It's this little piece here. And, and also the device tends to heat up with prolonged use. It's using a pretty outdated processor, the OMAP 4000 series, which was in use over a couple years ago, so it's very dated. Um, and this is the interesting part of my presentation, which I'm sorry it took so long to get to. Um, so Glass doesn't just have to be for consumers. It can be used in uh, corporate applications. Um, and the context switching uh, minimalization is potentially useful, as I said, in the interview context, and we'll see that in a second. Um, and this is actually a photo that um, one of the people I was interviewing snapped while using glass. And I was, that's my phone. I was mirroring the glass uh, screen on my phone to demonstrate things. And so the, the app that I, I proposed to them, it is, I haven't written it, but um, I, I thought I wanted to get their feedback on what they might want in an interview app. And these are some of the things we came up with. So the core functionality is it displays the questions that the interviewer is to ask of the interviewee. So this cuts down on a lot of paper shuffling and context switching. So instead of like looking down and looking up and looking down, you have glass on your face, you look straight ahead, the display is a little bit higher so that you can stare someone in the, in the eyes, the, the display is above, and it does not involve any context switch. Um, and there's an interface uh, where you can use the touchpad to select um, evaluations for the interviewee's responses. So you could have a scale of one to five potentially, or a binary yes, no, um, and the app would record those and either store them locally or transmit them to company servers. Um, we decided that local would probably work best because then um, the company would actually loan these devices out to interviewers and then take them back once done, and then they would plug it in, get the data, upload it into their database, all that. Um, uh, the, one of the most useful, potentially useful things in this app is that um, based on what response or what rating you give the interviewee, you may get a different question next. So that way, um, you're not going to waste time asking more specific questions if you've already dis discovered that the person doesn't have that much knowledge in that particular field. And um, finally, uh, this, is, this goes back to the privacy issue a little bit, um, the ability to record the interview um, while you're conducting it is potentially interesting and useful to the company um, in the sense that you can, uh, um, actually, I guess there's a missing point here. So, um, oh, actually, I talked about that later. Um, and you can also generate a, a rough transcript using uh, voice recognition, perhaps. Um, and then the implications of this would be, um, would be pretty large. So using a standard body of questions to streamline the interview process, um, I spoke to people in the company who said that some, some interviewers take way longer to give interviews than others because of uh, personal differences in how they ask their questions. And using this uh, mechanism, there would be some elimination of that because the app would guide you through which questions you should ask and when. Um, making sure all the relevant questions get asked so that um, there isn't missing information. And as I said, reduce the time spent interviewing, which would save the company money. Um, if the interviewers are tech people, then they can go back to writing their code and doing more important things. If there are HR people, then they can go do HR things. Um, and for uh, the video of the interview, um, so uh, especially like um, the higher ups, like HR or the CEO thought this was interesting. So you have a record of the interview. You don't necessarily watch it, but if somebody files a lawsuit against you for discriminating against them in the interview in some way, you have the video as fallback. So you can submit that as evidence if necessary. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but um, you never know. And also, um, another use of the video would be to sort of demonstrate like what is proper interviewing procedure. So when you're training new interviewers, uh, you show them the video and say like, okay, this is what the person did right, this is what the person did wrong. Um, obviously you could do this with an external camera, but having it all in one is less intrusive and uh, more convenient. And Right, so Glass is still um, a very early device. Uh, there are relatively few apps, and the ones, a lot of the ones that do exist are not published in the official app repository, so you have to sideload them and enable 
as of a recent update, you have to enable a certain developer permission to enable the voice trigger that lets you start the app with a voice command, because otherwise it doesn't show up in the menu. That's as of the KitKat update. Um, right, so there's a lot of uses for Glass that um, are yet to be discovered or implemented. Glass is still in beta. It's very expensive to get one by design, obviously, to price people out and make sure only the very dedicated people get one. Uh, the rumored public release is in late 2014. This has been popping up all over the internet, so you know you can always trust what the internet says, right? Um, software features are still being added and removed, as we saw in the case of the video call functionality being removed um, temporarily. They say they might come back in a future update. Um, bugs and interface problems do exist. The 16.1 update was a disaster. It apparently boot looped some people's devices, um, and it was a mess. And that's what the 16.11 update was for, to fix that. So luckily for me, my glass was off during that, so I, I didn't have to suffer through that. And of course, another big issue, possibly the biggest issue, is social acceptance of glass is absolutely not a given yet. So um, people think it's creepy. People think it looks silly. Um, some people think it's cool, but there's always you know, people on both sides of the spectrum. So this is uh, the selfie I took <laughs> at um, an art soiree. I look kind of angry in that picture. I apologize. Um, so if you guys have uh, any questions, and if, if uh, time permits, I would like to show you just very briefly what the interface looks like on the projector by hooking it up. So what's, what's, what's your question? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, when I was talking about the voice recognition, I was talking specifically about the voice actions of the device. So sometimes the device will misinterpret things. Um, OK Glass is the trigger phrase that um, fires the listening action on the, on the home screen. So actually, I've, I've said things that don't even sound like OK Glass, and somehow it got triggered. Um, and I have a pretty standard North American accent, which is what this device is uh, targeted to as an audience. Um, but when you're trying to use your device, somebody can like walk up to you and say, OK Glass, Google, and then some inappropriate thing just to mess with you. Uh, my friends have tried doing that before, but luckily, their, uh, their syntax was, quite, was a little bit off, so it didn't actually trigger. But they, they tried stuff like, OK, Google, safe search off, and then search for some inappropriate thing. So that's kind of an issue. It's not cued to your voice specifically currently. So yeah, anyone can trigger your voice actions if they speak loud enough. It's, it only records uh, stuff when you specifically trigger the video recording. And as a safeguard for privacy, Google mandates at least in the official recording app, that the screen be on at all times. So I don't know if you can see, but like it's clearly, it's very clearly on, and it's been on this whole time because I've been recording. Um, so it, you know, that kind of consumes a lot of battery, which is problematic. I wish they had like some sort of indicator that was less um, uh, draining of battery. But does that answer your question, or? Yeah. Well, this was really fascinating. I think never mind about interviewing. This could revolutionize dating. Right. Um, that would have very potentially awkward implications, yeah. uh, for sure. The, the, um, my actual question is, a lot of the functionality that you described seems to me things that you could do without Google Glass. I mean, training people to do better interviews, um, setting up sequences of questions so that you could skip over questions that weren't relevant. I mean, people can do Correct. that without Correct. But this is an all-in-one device that, instead of fumbling around with papers or going look at your phone, you just get it all in one package. So I guess it's the convenience factor mm -hmm. that makes a difference, I would say. So it seems to me that it would make a difference for the unskilled interviewer, but for the skilled interviewer, it doesn't add. Well, if you're a skilled interviewer, you know how to do these things. That's true. Um, but uh, as I said, with standardizing the set of questions is easier when the app sort of dictates it to you. Um, and that's of concern to you know HR and the company. Make sure everyone gets the same interview experience. Um, I actually don't know for sure, but it's 
probably the case. There's at least like a dozen competitors to glass, like startups. Everyone's trying to make one, a different version of it. The thing about the, just like what kind of frames and what kind of glasses. Yeah, Google has official like frame frames that you can buy now. They didn't use to at first. And it was an issue because putting it over glasses was cumbersome and it doesn't really work. So you need. Yeah, I was, I was just That probably, uh, as as I jokingly said in one of my first slides, it's, it's kind of a fashion statement, but not really, because you know people think it's ugly and clunky and all that. Yeah. So here's a question from the interview: Is it protective talking to someone in an interview when they can't see? Um, it might be intimidating, and that is definitely something that came up as I was talking to uh, HR personnel at the company. Um, but. Uh, at, on the other hand, the COO was very like, oh, like this video recording is great. And like, you know, if people don't like it, then, you know, I mean, it, it's a requirement of them to interview with us or it would be potentially. And, you know, like we've, we do background checks because we're a government contractor. So, um, you know, he was very sort of not concerned about that. But the HR person was more like, well, but I don't want uh, I don't want to see the video. I don't want to when I make my decision about hiring, I don't want to discriminate based on physical appearance. So, that, you know, there is a lot of considerations here. I would certainly be very concerned if I were yes. the senior corporate person. The last thing incriminating. I would want is the incriminating yeah. evidence yeah. that goes with yeah. the video. Exactly. Well, I guess that, that would uh, involve a more rigorous interview training process to make sure those don't happen. Guaranteed. No matter how rigorous the training. Well, I, I suppose it's a double edged sword in that uh, scenario. But did, they, did they think of that side of it, or was in your interview, were they only focusing? on assuming it would only be exculpatory information. I think the assumption was that uh, since the interviewer himself is also being recorded, at least by voice, um, like the interviewer would take more care to not do things like that because he knows he's on camera, as does the interviewee. So uh, is there another question over here? Uh, I just, yeah, I guess there's a question. There's a lot of interviews. Very interesting opinions about it. Did they have like, pre-marital status? Did they Oh yeah, the the HR people absolutely don't want to know about like, you know, uh, health conditions, marital status. Oh, interviewing documents, so interviewers accidentally have not think that they're like they're violating anything. Well, depending on how they Well, the company would be yeah, the company would be holding on to the. <laughs> the company would be holding on to that video, so like, I I don't think the interviewee would get a copy of the video necessarily. Um, Well, they, they would, I think, yeah. I think, I think the point is they, they may potentially have more to lose by virtue of recording an interview than to get. Clearly right. There, there are advantages, you know, there are potential drawbacks and there's potential drawbacks. And that, the recording. The, the, the sense here is that there may, in fact, be far more risk. The recording could be optional. So I, I discussed this, and as I said, there are people on both sides of the fence. So it doesn't have to be a, a feature of the app. It was just something we were throwing around as a but possible I, I option. I would ask, but what questions when showing up on the glass would you ask, and what were the ones you didn't ask? I have a field day with the ones you didn't ask. Yeah. So I want to see. And does the app from. itself discriminate in some way by by not asking certain candidates certain questions? Right. Okay. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, let's thank all of our speakers. Did you guys want to see the the interface in action at all? Just like briefly, like one minute. Um, I have a cord here. It's ready to go. Off, so it those is okay. Who need to go, which actually includes me. Um, no, but those who want to stick around and get the demo.